Okay, inside this think tank bag, which is the mirrorless mover 20, so it's quite a small bag, not tiny, but quite small. I have one USB lead connector, one small remote control, and one Mavic Pro. And this literally came just recently. I've never flown this before, so this is going to be the first time of flying. And as you can see, it is so much smaller and more compact than the Phantom. I believe the rotors actually open out automatically when you uh, start it up. We'll just open them up. I'm just going to place that down there for the moment. And the remote control, as you can see, is absolutely tiny. And then the other part that you need to go with it is your mobile phone. How you uh, operate this is you open up the grippy things underneath, take your phone, and I use a Sony phone. I don't know what how other phones um, operate or work. I'm assuming that most phones have a USB, micro USB connector that goes in the top up here. And if you do, you will get a lead that goes from here to here. And then it goes in there like that, which this one is also going to do. And you just put the phone in there like that. But because Sony put their micro USB connector at the bottom down here, I have to plug this lead in. And I had great difficulty trying to get this to work actually. Because all my other leads like this didn't work. Or none of the other ones worked. Only this one that came with the Mavic worked for some bizarre reason. So that's how you set this up with a Sony phone. Okay, we've just had a second inaugural 
flight. Um, I'll take you through a few of the things. Now this is only the second time I've used this so I don't really know exactly what's going on here. I need to read the instructions. Um, but you get a home point which tells you exactly where you are here and the first thing that I couldn't quite work out on the first flight which I've worked out now for the second flight is when you touch the crosshairs here it brings you up to this uh, circular submarine type um, graph here and the arrow points in the direction of the nose so once you fly out just turn the aircraft around and then the nose points back so that's how you fly back home uh, so that was the first thing that I needed to figure out, horses. Uh, it's not letting us take off, the simple reason we're down to, I think, 10% on the battery for the Mavic, so it's not going to let me take off. Um, some of the information up here that you get is the ISO, shutter speed, the EV is uh, minus 0.3, and it's on auto white balance. Again, I've got no idea how you adjust these at the moment. Um, I've got it set up to the maximum setting of 1080 and 48, I'm assuming 48 is 48 frames per second. I think we've recorded, well, it says 32, but I'm not sure we've had 32 minutes of flight, so we need to find out how long we've been flying for. I can have a look at the recording later on. My guess is about 20 minutes on that battery. Uh, just some information down here is your height, uh, distance, sorry, and height. And this is, uh, I need to try, try and change that into meters as well. When you swipe down, you get stuff on your phone, which you don't need. So, we can scrap that idea. Obviously when you swipe up you get nothing on the screen at all. Just autofocus. Remember to autofocus of course. Swiping up brings that back in. On the left hand side over here we have tap fly, tripod mode, gesture, active track. I want to try these in another time. Active track I believe is when you can set it to follow you. Gesture, I believe, is when you can get it to take a photo of you. It's like a selfie. Uh, tripod mode is very, very slow flying. And obviously at the moment it's in normal mode up there. And then just touch the arrow to close that. Information we have up on this screen up here is obviously distance, height. 58% uh, left in this. So this obviously lasts somewhat longer than the Mavic, of course. And it's flashing low battery. You get your speed over here. Just some of the dials. I don't know exactly what they all do, in all honesty. I haven't quite worked that one out. But obviously you have your controls here, up, down, left and right. This button here, I believe, is an emergency stop. Not to shut it down, but I believe if you're flying towards something and you want to stop forward momentum then I believe that's the button to like an emergency stop but keeps the rotors flying and it will hover. This is the home button, I've not used this yet, not needed to, although when the battery got to 15% it returned itself to home mode but then I just pressed it once because it was very very close, pressed it once and that took it out of home mode. This button here is for recording movies and this button over here is for taking still photos and of course as usual I did the movies but totally forgot to take any still photos. This button, this dial back here seems to tilt the camera up and down like that. I've no idea what that dial does there at the moment and then there's two buttons on the back. Uh, and they do obviously different functions as well. They're custom buttons, but again, I don't know what I can do with those at the moment. Actual flying, the first flight, obviously earlier on, I hadn't quite worked out how to bring it back home again, and that was more trial and error, and knowing the area here very well, and I was able to fly it back following the land. But once I'd figured out this arrow, that makes flying it an absolute, you know, doddle. 
You have auto take off with this button here and auto land with this button here I believe. Uh, but again I've not used those either. Uh, so I think that's pretty much everything and it's, it really does hook up you know absolutely perfectly um, with, you know, with the phone and flying it it doesn't seem quite as responsive as the Phantom 2. I have the Phantom 2, not the 3 or 4. Um, but it doesn't seem quite as responsive as those. But again, I've only flown it twice, so I think that's a bit unfair to judge it at this moment. But it was excellent flying. The camera on the monitor looked good here, so it'll be interesting to see what it looks like on the, on the computer and on your televisions. And uh, what else can I talk about? Uh, landing, landing I found very very easy. I was surprised how easy it was. Um, just one thing to bear in mind landing it. The Phantom has quite long legs and the camera hangs underneath and of course with such long legs if you have grass it can stand above the grass. This sits squat right on the ground as you can see here, the rotors are very, very close to the ground. Uh, the front rotors are a bit higher than the rearer. The rearer? <laughs> the front rotors are nearer the... <laughs> are further away, <laughs> Lassie. <laughs> Lassie. <laughs> Fil filming has been interrupted. As you can see that the rotors are very close to the ground, so anything higher than a, than a grasshopper of grass may cause a bit of a problem you know when it comes to taking off that's again something we'll have to we'll cross that bridge when we get to it uh, and you know collapsing it down again is just an absolute doddle to turn it off uh, you press it once and then press and hold and then let go and you have to remember to turn this off first and then you turn off the remote control and press once and then press and hold shut down and that shuts it down and then of course to put it away uh, you just fold the rotors up and then you know, they only go in one specific way so hold it towards you so the, so the camera is facing you and then fold in the rear first and then the front, rear first, and then the front. You can't do it the other way around. And that is the Mavic, and it literally does fit in the palm of my hand. So, when you go to put it away, you just have to lock the camera into position and you have this little gadget here and it's a bit fiddly to be honest and and I'm sure there's a better neck to it but that just locks the camera in there so you must remember to take that out before flying and before turning it on says he and then this just goes over the front that locks down into position there to protect the camera. And then take the camera out or the phone out. Like that, turn that off. And then that folds in there, that leg folds in there. That antenna in, that antenna in. And then it just fits in there, wrap that wire up there, and that's it. We'll catch you again soon. Thanks for watching, I hope this has been helpful. Bye.
Bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.